If you've been following the news over the last few weeks, you will have heard about this uh, recent video, actually it's a video from a few months ago, uh, where the Dalai Lama was interacting with a young boy in a public setting. And it's a video in which uh, the Dalai Lama and the boy kiss each other. There's, a, there's uh, an interaction that seems a little bit off-putting. It's a video that I found somewhat disturbing, and indeed many people did, and it's become something of a controversy. Uh, this is something that I didn't really want to get into in a video. However, a number of you have asked me for my thoughts on it. Uh, it's taken me a couple of weeks to sort of come to some thoughts on it, so I'm a little bit late to this party. But I thought what I would do in this video, in any event, is to, to begin with a few sort of background points about the Dalai Lama, about this video, and then get to, to five things that uh, I would, sort of five lessons that I would like to take from this particular interaction. I would recommend seeing the longer version of the video, which is only a couple of minutes long anyway. I'll leave a link to that down below in the notes in case you haven't seen the longer version. I think that gives a little bit more context to what uh, actually went on. In any event, uh, to begin with, the Dalai Lama is emphatically, he's not the Pope of Buddhism, and that's something that I think we should all keep in mind. Some of you may not be familiar with his relationship to Buddhism in general. The Dalai Lama has a certain amount of uh, important uh, sort of religious power within a certain sector of Tibetan Buddhism, but he has essentially no power in Buddhism generally, except just as a sort of a thought leader the way many people are. He has been over many years, decades in fact, a, a calm and a wise uh, presence within Buddhism. And I admit to being a fan of his generally. I heard him speak many, many years ago uh, in a talk that he gave in New Jersey. Uh, I've read many of his books. I've uh, taken courses in graduate school with one of his teachers. I've done a number of videos where I discuss uh, positively uh, the Dalai Lama's impact in Buddhism generally, and a couple of, of books of his that I have enjoyed reading. And I'll leave a link to, to one of those uh, videos down below in the notes if you'd like to, to hear more about that. I'm also, of course, aware that the Dalai Lama is a political lightning rod. In general, I've seen a couple of responses, types of response, to this video of the Dalai Lama's. Uh, one, of, one of those types of responses is is condemnatory, that sees this as an example of child abuse, and that condemns the Dalai Lama for, for doing this. And I know that a number of people, a number of you, will have had personal experiences of abuse, perhaps within uh, a, a religious or a Buddhist context, or will know people who were in that situation. And so that's a completely understandable kind of response here. On the other hand, there are those who say, that, that we're missing a, a, a critical part of sort of cultural importance here. That is to say, we're missing the cultural context. Uh, one uh, post that has been passed around quite a bit uh, discusses how uh, within the, 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 the town that the Dalai Lama was, was brought up in, it was normal for grandparents and grandchildren to have interactions that were somewhat reminiscent of what the Dalai Lama uh, did in this case where uh, grandparents would uh, pass uh, candies to their grandchildren by mouth and then request that the, that the grandchild eat their tongue, which is sort of a, a playful uh, suggestion that the grandparent was willing to sort of give everything to the grandchild. Now, I don't know the facts about Tibetan culture, so I can't really speak to that directly, uh, nor do I know the uh, very real personal experiences of people who have been through abuse, particularly, again, within a Buddhist context. So again, I can't speak on those things, although I do understand that they are very strongly held. There is also a video uh, of the child in question who was interviewed uh, soon after this encounter, and the child, at least in this interview, seems uh, pleased and happy with his encounter with a Dalai Lama, you make of that what you will. I'll, in any event, leave a, a link to the video down below in the notes if you want to see that. I'm also going to link down below to an excellent essay on Tricycle Magazine by Joshua Shelton, who is a PhD candidate, I believe, in Buddhist Studies, uh, where he discusses a lot of the nuances here, and I think it's, it's well worth uh, a read. It's, it's available online, again, linked in, below in the notes. 
Okay, so with all of that as background, uh, what's my take? Again, I'd like to make five uh, basic points. Uh, the first point I'd make is to counsel humility. Uh, we don't know all the facts. Uh, we're not the people in question. What we're seeing is a video that was taken again many months ago. Uh, we don't know exactly what went on. We weren't the people involved. So I think we have to be aware of our position in here as being uh, observers of something that we may not entirely understand. Secondly, uh, I think whatever we're going to say about the issue of abuse or child abuse, at the very least, the, the, the Dalai Lama made a, a pretty serious error in judgment here. And it's really not like him to do that. He's generally a very politically astute person, a socially astute person. So this is something of an anomaly for him. Although we have to keep in mind that uh, there are, you know, are photographs of him uh, sort of puckering up uh, with uh, Desmond Tutu, for example. So it's not as though this is entirely out of the ordinary for the Dalai Lama. Third, and I think related to the last point, we cannot forget, I think, that the Dalai Lama is 87 years old. And while that doesn't necessarily excuse what happened, it doesn't necessarily excuse his uh, lapse in judgment, I think it may partly explain it. Fourth, I think this reinforces some of my concerns about gurus and guru practices generally. It's always going to be problematic to give too much power to one individual, uh, both because they can misbehave, uh, whether or not you feel the Dalai Lama did in this case, at least it's certainly possible that they can misbehave, and somebody given a lot of power is certainly given more opportunity for misbehavior. So at the end, I think we should all keep in mind that our practice is our own, and that if we rely upon a guru or a teacher, which many of us will find useful, and indeed can be extremely useful, we should always keep in mind that, again, our practice is our own, and the guru should always be held as somebody who we shouldn't believe 100%. We should always test, always test, always test what, they're, what we're being told. Fifth, and to me most importantly, I think what we should be most concerned about is abuse, let's say particularly sexual abuse, that happens in secret and in private. Because it's secrecy and privacy that's the most problematic. Uh, for one thing, secrecy and privacy, I think, implies shame and embarrassment on the part of the person doing it. They're trying to keep it secret. They're trying to keep it out of the public eye because they know that people are not going to approve of it or wouldn't approve of it if they saw it. Also, secrecy and privacy make it all the more difficult for people who have been harmed by this kind of abuse to actually come forward and change it by confronting power structures. If these are hidden, if they're private, then the people in power can claim that they never happened. They can make, make, again, make pretend that all of these things are in the mind of the person who, uh, who, who made the, uh, the accusations. Now, I would submit that that's not the case with this video, because the video is, is clearly not secret or private. It happened in a very public event under the eyes of video cameras. I mean, it wasn't a secret that there were people were recording this. The Dalai Lama certainly knew that it was being seen by many people and recorded. So, to that extent, there doesn't seem to be the same issues of, again, shame and embarrassment here on the part of the Dalai Lama. Now, was there a, a mistake? Was there an error in judgment? Yes. Uh, but was this intentional abuse? Um, I think that's something that's in question here, but at the very least, it's not being kept secret. It's not being kept private. And I think uh, going forward, we certainly can't change the past, but going forward, what we should be most concerned about are the kinds of abuse that occur in position by people in positions of power, again, in places that are secret, that are private, that are being kept out of the public eye, and that should be revealed and corrected. But having said all that, I've already said too much. Uh, this should be a dialogue. I would like to know your thoughts on all of these matters, your thoughts on this video, your thoughts on the Dalai Lama, 
your thoughts on what perhaps we should do as a community, what people in power should do. Um, I think it's it should be a matter for discussion rather than a matter for people like me to sort of give our opinions on YouTube. So put them down below in the notes. I'll be interested to read and to respond to the ones that I can respond to, that I have a response to. In any event, uh, and please uh, keep it nice, keep it pleasant. Let's try to be as, as, as kind as we can, uh, remembering a right speech and all of this, which is something that has always been in the back of my mind as well. So all of you be well, and we'll catch you on the next video.